Hello students. So today we are going to continue structure of the atom part 2 from the conclusions of Rutherford's atomic model or alpha scattering experiment. Let us look into the slides. Conclusions from a scattering experiment. Alpha scattering experiment. The vast majority of alpha particles were not deflected at all. The atom must be mostly empty space. Some alpha particles deflected through large angles. There must be a very small nucleus with a positive charge with a large electric field near to its surface. Alpha particles repelled. Alpha particles are positively charged. So the nucleus must be positively charged in order to create an electrostatic force of repulsion. Atoms are neutral overall. Electrons must be on the outside of the atom separating one atom from the next. Conclusion, as a result of his observations, let us know it again, Rutherford suggested that the atom had a positively charged center which contained most of the mass. He called the heavy positively charged center the nucleus. He went on to suggest that the nucleus was surrounded by orbiting electrons required for electrical neutrality. Now let us look into the drawbacks of Rutherford's scattering experiment. What are the drawbacks? There were some drawbacks. Let us look into the drawbacks. Rutherford's model explains the structure of atom in a very simple way, but it suffered from various drawbacks. Rutherford proposed that electrons revolve at a high speed in circular orbits around the positively charged nucleus. When a charged particle electron revolves around positively charged nucleus, it needs to be accelerated at so as to keep it moving in circular orbits. Now as you can see the diagram that is depicted here, negatively charged electron, positively charged nucleus. And in this model, the negatively charged electron could fall into the nucleus. This does not happen actually. However, according to electromagnetic theory, whenever a charged particle such as electron is accelerated around another charged center, that is the nucleus, which are under force of attraction, there would be continuous radiation of energy. This loss of energy would slow down the speed of the electron and eventually the electron would fall into the nucleus as shown here. An atom would collapse but such a collapse does not occur. Thus, Rutherford's model could not explain the stability of atom. Secondly, Rutherford proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus in the fixed orbits. However, he did not specify the orbits and the number of electrons in each orbit. Spiraling of the electrons, an accelerating electron into the nucleus. You can see the diagram which is clearly shown. Now the atomic structure, the Rutherford Bohr model of an atom which shows electron and nucleus. Atomic structure, an atom consists of heavy positively charged nucleus. The whole mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. The electrons in an atom revolve around the nucleus in definite circular paths called orbits or energy levels. Each energy level is associated with definite amount of energy. Shells or energy levels, electron shells, the number of electron shells orbiting the nucleus is different depending upon the atom. A very simplistic model is shown here, the maximum number of electrons a shell can hold is 2n square where n is the shell number. Now let us look into the Bohr's model of atom. In the Bohr's model of atom, Electrons travel in defi defined circular orbits around the nucleus. The orbits are labeled by an integer, the quantum number n. Electrons can jump from one orbit to another, emitting or absorbing energy. Bohr's model of the atom 
negatively charged electrons orbit the positively charged nucleus in certain orbits forming electron shells electrons orbit at certain distances electrons gain energy to move to higher orbits or lose energy to drop to lower orbits emitting photons this slide shows the orbits or the shells where you can see the nucleus is shown first shell second shell and third shell containing the electrons number of electrons in the first shell is 2 second shell 8 electrons and third shell 18 electrons this slide again shows the orbits or the shells orbit energy shell or energy level protons electrons n shell n is equal to 4 m shell 3 l shell 2 and k shell is 1 so the shell just after the nucleus is k l m n let us look into the postulates of bohr's atomic model electrons revolve around the nucleus with definite velocities in concentric circular orbits situated at defined definite distances from the nucleus the energy of an electron in a certain orbit remains constant as long as it remains in that orbit it neither emits nor absorbs energy these are termed stationary states or main energy states thank you